Good, after, good morning, everyone. We're starting our session in a minute, just for your information. Uh, good, good morning, everyone. Uh, it's my pleasure to address you today as a representative of Azerbaijan by expressing our thanks to our hosts, the Governor of France, for their hospitality and for the opportunity to convene in Paris for this year's IGF. And I thank you for the invitation and coming here. And first of all, I would like to introduce a pan uh, panel, uh, starting by me. I'm Vasif Mamadov from UNDP, Council of Office of Azerbaijan. And we have a really uh, important topic today, which is all about how to work together at the regional level, projects, forums, and capacity building programs for innovative progress in ICT and transport. And our uh, topic today will start with just briefly talking about the issue and then have a, a panel for discussion. And if you are interested in a like, specific issue, any question, we, you can come to our booth in IGF Village for further communication. And first, I would like to introduce our panel and panelists. And, uh, first, I would like to introduce you Omar Mansour Ansari. Uh, he's uh, the founder and president of Tech Nation. As well as, I'd like to introduce you to Leonid Todorov, who is the president of APTL, APTLD, and also uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Rashad Azizov, who is the head of the Department of Innovative Development and Information Society and Electronic Governance as the Minister of uh, Transport Communications and High Technology of Azerbaijan. Uh, before I start, I would like to give a panel to uh, Mr. Omar Mansouri, talking about your projects and specifically the new one that you, we had any uh, conversation in the IGF village. Um, thank you very much uh, for the opportunity. My name is Omar Mansour Ansari. Um, um, I run a technology uh, company based in Afghanistan called Tech Nation. Uh, we have a number of uh, projects and programs that have uh, uh, regional impact, uh, mainly focusing on uh, capacity building training and education in Afghanistan and also awareness creation. Uh, within the country, that's where we focus, but also we um, want to collaborate, expand to other regions, you know, work with our uh, neighboring countries and countries in the region. Um, Tech Nation's uh, major uh, contributions as a private sector company uh, has been actively participating and supporting the uh, IGF Afghanistan, which is um, the, a new um, national IGF. Uh, we had uh, IGF 2017 for the first time, and then IGF Afghanistan 2018, which was this year. 
now working on the third one, which will be uh, next year. At the IGF Afghanistan, uh, we brought together about um, 200 people from all walks of life so they can uh, discuss major problems and challenges they're facing uh, related to the internet governance and how they can contribute, you know, fix, um, uh, uh, address the, the challenges the uh, Afghan community in general is facing and how we can enhance the uh, policy and regulatory environment in Afghanistan. An additional project that Technician is working on is called techwoman.asia, which was also um, started in 2017. Uh, we had a session at IGF uh, Mexico, uh, where uh, a group of um, uh, women and men um, thought about uh, engaging um, the uh, women who are in technology uh, to support each other, build capacity, and uh, do some engage in regional collaboration. So that was, that's how the idea came in last year in Geneva, um, which was, uh, the, the first one was in Mexico, 2016, and last year, 2017, uh, there was a soft launch of Tech Women that issue uh, at the IGF um, uh, in, in Geneva. Uh, if you go to the website techwomen.asia, you would see uh, what Tech Women that issue does. Um, the uh, six activity pillars include um, contributing to ecosystem development across Asia and the Pacific, uh, skill building, networking. Uh, business acceleration, uh, policy and advocacy, and cybersecurity and safety. And the, the ecosystem development, uh, the network, uh, Tech Women that Asia would like to work with uh, diverse stakeholders across uh, the Asia and the Pacific um, on various uh, activities related to e ecosystem development. And that includes working with the accelerators and incubators and other ecosystem builders in across Asia and the Pacific so they can, you know, enhance the lives and livelihoods of uh, women um, in technology. Uh, the network is so much focused on uh, women in technology from across uh, Asia and the Pacific, which starts up from Russia and goes down to New Zealand, Azerbaijan being a part of it. Um, uh, and then uh, the second activity pillar is uh, um, skill building, where uh, we focus on two uh, major uh, skill building activities. Number one is uh, leadership and management, and two is the technology skills. Um, then uh, do a lot of networking events and the purpose is for uh, different regions and communities across Asia and the Pacific to, to work together, share knowledge and experience, you know, and, and uh, help with knowledge and technology um, uh, transfer from one country to another country. We also support um, business acceleration, women who would like to start a new business uh, tech Women that Asia provides them with a platform where they can come, get mentorship, uh, find a co-founder, and work together uh, to properly set up their companies in hand and enhance their businesses and be su sustainable. On uh, cybersecurity and safety, uh, as um, all of you know, uh, cyber uh, security is one of the key challenges and also online safety, especially for women. Um, the harassment issue, cyberbullying, and so many other challenges. Uh, and, and one of the major causes for that is lack of awareness in the um, Asian continent. Um, so that's one of the other um, areas that we're focusing on. Uh, it provides a membership opportunity, uh, mentorship uh, platform, and also uh, a platform for volunteers to come together and support um, the activities across the Asia and Pacific. I think that's uh, enough for now, but I'll, happy to, I'll be happy to uh, discuss later if there are any questions. Uh, many thanks indeed, and, uh, Mr. Ansari, for your uh, contribution. Definitely we'll have a, a last 20 minutes for the active Q&A. 
And, uh, and I would like to give a panel to Mr. Leonid Todorov to talk about the specific outcome of this topic or any specific perspectives. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chair. So I have uh, five minutes, right? Uh, well, first of all, uh, let me just explain that I am a general manager of a relatively small uh, yet important regional organization which deals with uh, domain names across Asia Pacific and beyond. So we have uh, 61 members, and I believe uh, that as our members uh, vary from very big uh, CCTLD registries, country code top level uh, registries, to very small one, for example, located across, uh, scattered across the uh, southern Pacific area. Uh, now, my uh, sense and my experience is uh, controversial, uh, frankly, and uh, I have very mixed feelings about uh, capacity building projects, uh, being a practitioner. Well, first of all, uh, just to, uh, to pick on uh, what uh, 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 my fellow panelists just said, I believe that IGF, uh, whatever regional or national, is not, of course, a vehicle, actually, to uh, uh, transport and translate whatever uh, competences and skills and experiences. Rather, it's a kind of, uh, you know, a networking event where people could uh, discuss certain things, no more than that. And uh, IGF has never, has never been meant uh, to, uh, has never meant to actually be like that. So um, now another thing, uh, just a side comment, is that IGF is usually typically very good uh, when it's uh, uh, held for the first time in this, this or that area. Uh, the second or third time, it's not as successful simply because it draws less uh, uh, smaller audiences because the topics are the same all the time and speakers, which is important, are also the same. Uh, next, uh, uh, I would say next uh, instrument we use in our activities uh, is fellowships. And I must admit that fellowships is also a tricky question because whenever you have fellowships, for example, uh, to train people or just to deliver, share some experience, you know, some uh, record of excellence, if you will, uh, over time fellowships tend to grow into some kind of travel club because you will feel, you would see the same faces all the time and it's questionable whether these fellowships would really bolster any capacity rather than that ability to travel and pick hotels and airlines. Uh, uh, in overall, that uh, these capacity building projects uh, we can talk about uh, with a different degree of success of uh, each and every uh, individual project. Uh, well, they are meant to get the horse to the water at best. Or, if we are really lucky, to get that horse a drink that, the water, right? But uh, then uh, the problem is how to make sure that uh, that horse drinks the water it needs rather than uh, the water which uh, seems a bit sweeter. Uh, so uh, another point is that uh, typically these capacity building projects are developed by in some high offices, uh, whether national or international, say, for example, international aid agency. And then uh, it's, uh, it's hard to... Uh, uh, discern whether their goals are actionable and uh, their outcomes are measurable. Uh, because it's really hard because we are lost in different kinds of uh, instruments with which those agencies try uh, to make sure, try to refine that project and fine tune. Uh, I think that at least our experience shows that. I wouldn't go much into detail, but then if you have questions, I would try, try to explain. I believe that uh, the best chances for survival and success have those projects which are customized with a full account of local needs, which means that we should have a very uh, uh, trustworthy source of input uh, inputs uh, from the grassroots level and uh, with a lot of intelligence, of course, uh, uh, gather it uh, on that grassroots level. I would say also that yet another interesting experience which actually has been a great success and which we should uh, think of. Uh, I've just been to China and once again at some World Internet Conference, I was amazed, truly amazed by the number of young entrepreneurs who speak absolutely impeccable English who uh, hold degrees from the best U.S. universities and who are back to China 
to start their own businesses. I guess we should uh, look at that and uh, check what were the roots, uh, what, what the roots of that uh, success story were. Uh, so, uh, yet another point is, of course, it's a government-run uh, program in China. So. Uh, once again, the question is whether it should be the government only to take care of these capacity building projects, or uh, should there be some other stakeholders involved? My sense, I mean, at least from my experience, is that, of course, we should try that multi-stakeholder approach. But again, it's just a question for further discussion and debate. With that, just very few points. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, indeed, uh, Mr. Todorov. Uh, for the uh, regarding the topic, if you uh, have any like questions, any like specific clarification point, we'll have uh, the last 20, 15 minutes for the QA, just for your kind information. And I would like to give a panel for our last speaker, uh, Mr. Rashad Azizov. Thank you very much, <coughs> ladies and gentlemen, colleagues. Let me uh, first thank the host country and IGF Secretariat for the invitation to this uh, forum. This is uh, the first time I'm attending uh, IGF as a head of Department of Innovative Development of Innovation, uh, Informational Society and Electronic Governance at the Ministry of Transport, Communication and High Technologies of Azerbaijan. I look forward to meeting, listening to and learning from you throughout uh, the forum and uh, let me thank our speakers that uh, join us in this session. The congregation here of all these stakeholders represents uh, the most valuable asset of the IGF, which is a dynamic discussion space where every voice has a say and every idea the potential of influencing internet policy making. The IGF is an open, inclusive, and transparent forum. It welcomes governments and the government organization, business representatives, and the technical community, social uh, society, civil society organization, as well as any individual internet user interested in internet governance issues. Uh, the government of Azerbaijan pays a great importance to the development of ICTs. The main target of Azerbaijan 2020 development concept is to empower ICTs for doubling non-oil sector of uh, country's GDP in coming uh, eight, ten years. A country's telecommunication infrastructure has been uh, revived and fully digitalized. Today, there uh, are uh, 70 internet users per 100 citizens. 50% of them enjoy broadband communications. Azerbaijan keeps a leading position in this uh, index among the CIS and uh, Central Asian countries. Azerbaijan, uh, to increase the efficiency of public administration, to provide transparency and inclusiveness, uh, we have uh, achieved very good results in e-governance, making many online services available for public use. Development of innovative entrepreneurship, uh, improvement of the legal framework, adoption of various assistance and uh, incentive mechanism affordably of financial resources and venture capital financing, implementing and maintaining uh, macroeconomic stability are those solid measures taken by their uh, government. We also try to support startups and R&D groups aiming to stimulate the production of high-tech and innovative services and goods. Uh, a few days ago, uh, the state um, established a new agency of innovations uh, that are serving to these uh, purposes. The capacity building opportunities for a forum provides are truly remarkable. Such a vast variety of stakeholders are able to learn from one another and to build long-standing uh, partnerships that are so crucial for development. My department and our ministry are working with uh, other UN entities, is committed to continuing and strengthening the IGF capacity building activities and to help provide training on the use of ICTs for development for those indeed. In our region, we don't have uh, such expectations. The main reason is obvious, a lack of highly developed nation and interregional digital and broadband infrastructure. The government of Azerbaijan takes preemptive measures in this regard, together with the state oil fund of our country. 
We have prepared a roadmap to roll out the vast broadband internet infrastructure with model fiber to home in urban and the rural areas of the country. We pray, pay special attention to the public-private partnership as well in their implementation of this project and consider the private sector as a key contributor to the project. Because of its geographical location and economical potential, the Azerbaijan's region is in the spotlight today. In the classic sense, Eurasia means two great joint continents of Europe and Asia. However, we are talking about the region, a small region uh, that is surrounded by South Caucasus, Central Asia, the Middle East, uh, the Eastern Europe, a region uh, rich with natural resources and hydrocarbon resources, which also has high scientific technological potential and human resources, has the potential to compete with the countries of the world in all priority directions of the development. Development of the satellite infrastructure is also very important in the overall development of the region and is seen as a part of virtual Silk Road. Currently, satellites of Turkey, Russia, Kazakhstan, and the Arab countries operate in the wide region. And uh, Azerbaijan also uh, launched its own satellites. The first was done in uh, 2013. Uh, now we have already three satellites in, uh, that uh, serves in telecommunication uh, sphere. Uh, clearly, the Internet is an important tool for development, and it is utilized in multiple sectors, including health, education, agriculture, and industry, disaster relief, and environmental protection, among so many others. Worldwide, communication is now faster and easier than ever. Telemedicine and e-learning are available to people in remote areas, and mobile technologies are empowering millions of women in developing countries, creating entrepreneurial opportunities. The use of ICT is providing vital government service is on the rise. While this progress is surely significant, we have a long way to do, go in our collective efforts to bridge the digital divide, because uh, nowadays the uh, broads are not so significant because we are living in the global world. Um, the Internet Governance Forum is an important venue to raising awareness, initial discussions, identifying ways to address the digital divide and informing the policy-making process. I invite all of you to actively take part in the discussions today. Let us also use this opportunity to discuss critical issues uh, in the context of regional uh, partnership. With the guiding principle that any internet governance initiative should first and foremost do no harm, it is clear that multi-stakeholder cooperation and discussion is required to help promote broad-based and inclusive policymaking in order to support the internet's dynamic growth. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Mr. Azizov, for encompassing an informative uh, speech. Uh, prior to wrap up the final ideas and the comments on the topic, I would like to know in the audience, uh, any, is there any uh, contribution, is there any question that uh, you would like to talk about or any topic that you would like to underline? Okay, uh, Donny. Yes, uh, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Donny from the Indonesian MCIT, Ministry of uh, Communication and Information Technology. Uh, let me uh, serve uh, for a while that actually Indonesia, we have um, our Indonesian Internet Governance Forum, is uh, established since 2012. And uh, each year we have a national dialogue of IDIGF, the of Indonesian Internet Governance Forum. We try to formulate the um, idea and uh, uh, perspective from multi-stakeholders, and we try to um, uh, emphasize the, 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 the conclusions and bring it to the MCIT as one of the input when the, uh, the governments want to develop a certain uh, policy regarding to the ICT. What I'm trying to uh, learn from the uh, Azerbaijan IGF is uh, actually we are 
maybe it's it's happen also in the other country of the the IGF in other countries. But Indonesia, we are facing some uh, advantage, uh, some challenging actually, like how we can we maintain the balance of the uh, what we call it, not power, but the balance of the uh, the, the 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 rules of the each stakeholders. Because we know that the IGF it needs uh, the modality, it needs um, uh, resources to you know to, to make it sustain. So the one that have ability to uh, support it is of course is from governments and of course is from the the uh, private sectors. And the uh, the challenge is somehow the other stakeholders will uh, will not suspicious but will uh, see. Uh, why some or uh, one of the stakeholders have uh, to uh, what we call it have to a uh, strong uh, 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 not power strong uh, 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 impact on the decisions that, that develop uh, via the, the discussion of the IGF. So how we can ensure that the stakeholders have a equals um, balance on the decision process? Thank you very much. Uh, many thanks for your question, Donna. I believe, and I was wondering whether Mr. Todorov can uh, explain on this issue and answer this really important question. Donna, first of all, I would like to thank you because uh, uh, you've done a great job and certainly I've, as a, 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 the Indonesian IGF, you're ahead of uh, uh, whatever work which is being done uh, you know, within the global IGF because, you know, the global IGF uh, is not supposed, by its mandate, is not supposed to be even an advisory uh, body, right? It's only a talk shop in a good sense of this word. Well, you are doing some policy recommendations, put it mildly, uh, for your government, which is, I think, it's a very, very positive development, probably a shining example for all of us. Uh, that's one thing. The other thing, I mean, addressing to your question, I believe I'll be very short. Uh, I, at all times, I mean, traveling across Asia Pacific, at all times, I uh, see people really keen on the thinking of yet another Silicon Valley. Because one part of the deal is, okay, we will lay the best broad, broadband ever. That's clear. Then we will create a, our own Silicon Valley. We will have the best experts uh, working there. You know, we will just benefit from the best ICT and internet uh, uh, industry examples, and that would just help us diversify our economy and all that, all the, all those things. Yet in reality, it happens so that your best uh, and uh, best, uh, your, your best and brightest uh, would just uh, go to the United States at the end of the day. So, and here is a problem, like what we are creating by our capacity building efforts. In fact, we are creating a pool of expertise for the United States, for their real Silicon Valley to benefit from. So we work for the United States in that regard. That's one thing. Secondly, I was wondering why there is no any other Silicon Valley in the world, across the world, yet. What's wrong with us? And the third question is, do we understand that there is no Silicon Valley anymore as we used to know it in the United States anymore? I just mentioned that experience of China. I must say that in China for the moment, with all those policy controversies, which we may discuss further, but in China, you may find the spirit of Silicon Valley across uh, Shanghai area, which is much greater than, for example, in the Silicon Valley itself, where big corporations effectively blocked any developments and any innovation. I know that, I'm, I'm sorry, I've just absorbed that time, but this is, I think it's important. I believe what is, what we underestimate and what we uh, undervalue in our discussions is the role of institutions, that uh, nexus plexus of formal and informal relations between people and organizations, which once helped develop Silicon Valley, and for now, for example, bol are bolstering uh, China's uh, uh, IT sector's development. This, I think, is worth exploring. Thank you. 
Thank you for a very interesting question, and also thank to Leonid uh, to the interesting answering. I have just uh, I've came to uh, Paris not from Azerbaijan. I'm uh, returning from Silicon Valley, and uh, I've been uh, in Boston in Massachusetts uh, Technological Institute, and uh, can tell uh, the things that uh, yes, of course, there is some. Uh, true in your uh, words, but nevertheless, we are uh, looking for uh, making all this uh, sphere global. And uh, if we are uh, thinking about the regional development, we must consider uh, uh, one of the aims to uh, establish the regional hubs. If we are thinking about their uh, evaluation, about their development of our startups, we must consider taking into consideration that the success of startup means the global success. And uh, without Silicon, without United States, because it's the most biggest market of the world, it is uh, a little bit uh, difficult to do, to catch this success. That's why I suppose our development must go in the uh, direction of uh, establishing the regional hubs. And uh, for, for example, the Azerbaijan, we consider uh, can be such in a hub because of uh, the, it is um, also the CIS country, it's the Turkish languages country speaking, uh, also it's the Muslim country. Uh, there are too many uh, things that uh, is very common with uh, different stakeholders. Uh, what about the uh, role of the government and uh, the, difference between uh, other stakeholders. Of course, uh, as a heritage of the Soviet Union, uh, their state power is very strong in these countries. But nevertheless, we must understand that the uh, crucial uh, role of the private sector in this process, they are uh, developing uh, power of startups, of ICT, and uh, the state must uh, help to them but the market is uh, established by the private sector. That's why uh, at the moment when their state can do, uh, try to do the best uh, to form uh, uh, formate the equality, equality between uh, the stakeholders, private stakeholders, then it is the key to the success in this field. Um, Mr. Ansari, would you like to add any comments? Uh, thanks again. Um, I agree with uh, Mr. Rashad and other uh, colleagues at the panel uh, that we need to do more on uh, regional collaboration. Uh, there's so much to be shared among the uh, countries in the CIS, um, countries in the Middle East, Asia, Central Asia, and others. Um, uh, the government's role is to provide with, a, with, with the environment for the private sector to grow, develop, uh, and for the startup to get nurtured. And I'm glad that Azerbaijan is doing so much on that, the government of Azerbaijan. Uh, but it, um, as, as Mr. Azizov said, it's also possible for the country to play a role in the region, and that would be through uh, creating a collaborative mechanism with other countries in the region. Um, uh, in the next 25 to 30 years, Asia would become like a major hub for economic activities, and we need to uh, get ready for that, be prepared. If you see um, the Asian countries, majority of them are doing business with Europe, with America, but they don't do business with each other. So, uh, but the future would be, uh, and that's due to conflict and a lot of uh, differences, but in next 25 to 30 years, uh, that would change. Uh, India and China would start doing business with each other. Japan and China, for example, in Azerbaijan and, you know, other countries in the region, they would start doing business uh, together in trade and, you know, these transportation in roads coming, connecting Central Asia with South Asia, the Middle East with um, the rest of the Asia. That would, 
uh, create a lot of opportunities for the young people, for the startups, for trade and governments, you know, civil societies. So there would be a lot of collaboration and commute, you know. Uh, people would be uh, doing trade, they would be uh, sharing, you know, knowledge and experiences with each other. So this, that's where we're going and we need to be uh, prepared uh, for that. And I think the business acceleration and incubation programs that you're supporting uh, would really help contribute to that. Uh, but uh, we also need to look into how we can expand this to other regions to, you know, bring, collaborate with, for example, India, Afghanistan, China, other places, you know, in the region so that we can share experiences. Thank you. I hope uh, panelists uh, indicated and underlined all the information that Donny you were asking for in the question. And uh, before and prior to wrap up the session and uh, making on the talking about conclusion, I would like to know firstly in the audience, uh, is there any question or is there any uh, point or comment? Then most probably I would like to ask the panel and our uh, distinguished panelists, is there any comments or any uh, final thoughts you would like to express? Uh, thank you, sir, for uh, your grand vision of the future of the region, which I fully agree with. Uh, my point, though, is that as a practitioner, I deal with uh, quite a number of nations, once again, across the region. I, and I can see that they are very, very much in terms of, uh, uh, of stages of economic development. So uh, uh, the question is not uh, uh, what we uh, foresee. The question is how we uh, can actually lay the foundation uh, for that progress, future progress, and which instruments and uh, vehicles uh, we should employ uh, which would surely bring us there. So I think uh, the path is more or less clear. But uh, all these technicalities we're talking about are still, uh, well, for example, uh, they are not uh, that clear to me. So it's a long way to go. Thank you. Uh, and thank you. Uh, I would like to uh, thank our panelists for their participation today as well as yours participation. And before we wrap up, uh, I would like to mention several points. First of all, we have a booth in IGF Village. Uh, feel free and we are most welcome with, to see you there and for further discuss this, this issue. And also if you uh, need any kind of clarification information, we will be most uh, welcome and we're happy to help you. And another thing is, uh, since we were the host of the 2012 event of IGF, and we still have IGF Secretariat in Baku, who will uh, organize in the beginning of December Regional Internet Governance Forum of Azerbaijan. And uh, if you have any question regarding that specific forum, and also would like to attend and uh, get registered, uh, feel free to contact me or us, uh, the delegation in the IGF village. And the end, uh, how well, we, today we have a, a fruitful uh, event, so it was small but fruitful discussion and, uh, and regarding what are really trends and in order to, how we are trying to make this place not uh, action only but uh, also not talking only but also the place where the actions are indeed seen. And I thank you all for coming and have a nice day. Thank you. <laughs>